Hey folks, John here with Hickory Forge. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. So, what's going on today? I'm down here in the workshop. I'm actually booked pretty solid with orders for like tools and blades and things like that. But I had to place a big material order and the stuff I need to continue production isn't going to be here till tomorrow. So, I got a little bit of free time, so I want to go ahead and get a charity build knocked out. I know I've been kind of slacking on those lately just because I've been so busy. So, technically, this is going to be July's charity build. I'm still sticking to my goal of doing one a month. But what I got here is a, a bar of some really coarse grained wrought iron. If you've seen the last Viking Axe video I made, this is what I used to make the eye wrap, and it had real pretty grain. Here, I got a scrap piece of 1095. We're going to flatten some of this stuff out uh, and stack up a sand my billet and go from there. Not entirely sure what kind of blade I want to make. I think with fall coming up, uh, you know, a lot of camping's probably going to go on. So I'm thinking maybe something along the lines of a bushcraft knife or like an EDC belt knife, you know, a general purpose knife. So that's what's going on organization we're donating to is the Clara White Mission. Uh, the reason I chose them is they have a lot of really good programs for helping homeless veterans. I saw some pretty cool news story uh, about them building like a tiny house community for homeless vets to live in while they uh, while they provide job training and help get them back on their feet and get them reintegrated into society. So I just feel like that's a good place for it to go. So whenever the knife is done, it's going to go up for sale and 75% of the money is going to the Clara White Mission. But uh, let's get moving. So First thing I'm gonna do is take this to a cutoff already and cut it in half because right now it's like a weird size. It's too long and unwieldy to really hold the tongs, but it's too short to hold it with your hands. So I'm just gonna cut it in half and then just flatten both the pieces out and go from there. There's other stuff I want to use this for, so I'm gonna go ahead and flatten out the whole bar and then just take and forge it flat. You know, with a wrought iron, you want to work it pretty hot splitting the fibers but other than that just hit it with a hammer till it's flat so about half an hour a good hammer work later we got both these bars flattened out they're about three eighths of an inch thick or so so they're a good uh you know all around usable thickness that big piece i'm just going to set to the side i got other projects planned for that and the small piece is what we're going to cut up to stack up our billet probably not going to use all of it we'll use some of it so we actually ended up using pretty much that whole bar we just got that one little off cut but anyway we're going to get our 1095 trimmed down so it mates up a little better. We're going to grind all the surfaces to be welded flat and smooth and everything so we don't got to deal with any inclusions, hopefully, or anything like that. We'll get it tacked up and keep moving. Alrighty, got all the pieces cleaned, degreased, and tacked together. It's looking good. I'll get a little bit of heat on this guy, give it some flux, and then uh, bring it up to welding heat and consolidate this stuff. So, first weld, just one quick gentle pass to get it to stick together. Rush it, flux it back in the fire. So here we are after the first few welding heats. It uh, feels like it's stuck real good. I was gonna cut off that screwed up end where uh, one piece of the iron is overhanging, but it's actually pretty handy in keeping track of which side I need to work because I don't want the wrought iron to get you know too much thinner on one side than the other. So all that's gonna happen now is we gotta flatten this out into a bar stock that we can make a blade out of. Uh, don't really know how far it's gonna go. There's more material here than I thought, but that's all there is to it. So, now we just want to forge the billet out flat. Nothing to it, really. I'm probably going to take it all the way where I need it to go with welding heats to avoid stressing the welds and to avoid splitting the grain of the wrought iron. But we'll get there. So, here we are after doing some work flattening the billet out. It's looking good. Still a little bit on the thick side, but uh, this is about where you start to get a rough idea of how much steel you actually have. Right now I've got about eight and a half inches of material that's about a quarter inch thick by about an inch and a half wide. It's a tiny, tiny bit less length than I want, so I do think I'm going to forge in the shape of the handle to preserve a little more material for the blade. So, I'm thinking something along the lines of a French pattern fur tray knife with about a five inch blade. So I'm going to preserve about five and a half inches of material. Set a mark right there. And forge all this in to make the handle. Nothing to it, really. So, didn't have to move a lot of material at all to get the length I was looking for in the handle. I'm going to let this thing cool on its own, uh, break for lunch, and then hit the grinder and see what we got. So, got our billet cooled off. I got the profile I want to make marked out. You know, nothing to it, really. Uh, got a nice elongated teardrop shaped handle. I like those. I feel like they're comfortable and they look good. And, uh, flows into the drop point real nice. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get the profile ground out, and before I bring this thing down to its uh, finished thickness, 
I'm gonna dip it in the acid and see where my core is because I feel like it might have gotten kind of off axis during the forging. I don't know if you can see or not, but I feel like one of these sides might need to be flattened more than the other before uh, it's done to make everything look good. So that's what's happening now. So after a quick dip in the acid, this is what we got. Focus. There we go. So our core is definitely pushed off to this side down here. But up here, it's pushed off to the opposite side. So the, it seems like the core kind of twisted during the forging. Not entirely sure how to fix it. So uh, I guess whenever I go to grind the whole billet flat, I might just tilt the knife ever so slightly and see if I could bring that core close back to center. And uh, we'll see what we end up with. The good news is all the forge welds took beautifully, so it, it will be a functional knife, assuming it makes it through the heat treat. It just might not look as perfect as I would have liked. So before I go any further, I kind of wanted to show you what it is I'm doing. I don't know if this is going to work. I've never seen it done, never talked to anyone. It's just an idea I had. What I've done, you can see I've ground one flat here, leaving the spine where the wrought iron was thin pretty much untouched. It'll still be ground flat, but I want the majority of the material to come from here. Opposite on this side where my wrought iron was thick. You know, I just barely want to kiss that enough to get it flat, and here is where I want to hog it off. Basically, it's like I'm trying to shift the, act, the central axis of the knife kind of like that to be in like that by removing material. Like I said, I don't know how it's gonna work. It's just uh, something I'm trying and I wanted to explain it to you guys. Alrighty, so we got the spine down to about 3 16th of an inch. Uh, that's about where I want it. Edge is still a little thicker, but that's okay. That'll come out when we do the bevels. I don't know if you can see or not. It's a lot better than it was. It's still not perfectly in the center, but it's better than it was. So uh, yeah, we'll keep moving. We'll get the bevels struck in and go from there. So this is just a quick test etch before heat treat. Looks like we got our 1095 along the whole cutting edge, so that's good. A little bit still on the edge up there, but there's plenty of meat to come out of this thing. Perfect. Alrighty, got the touch mark in there. It's looking good. I took the flats up to 220 before I stamped it, so hopefully when I go to polish them back out, I don't have to grind, uh, I don't have to remove enough material to really distort it. But uh, we'll go ahead and normalize this thing three times and uh, get it ready to go. Alrighty, going in for the quench. T95 all quench steel, nothing special. So here's what we got out of the quench. Hardened really, really good. It skates the uh, the 65 Rockwell file, so it's really hard. But we did pick up a pretty significant warp. So I'm gonna clamp it to a straight piece of steel and uh during the tempering process and that should bring it back to where i can fix it on the grinder but uh i'm gonna give it an hour at 450 and check it again and then do as many cycles of that as i need to on something like you know an outdoor knife you want to rock well in the high 50s so 65 is way way too hard so uh we'll temper this baby and we'll keep moving so it's like two weeks later i'm finally getting another chance to work on this thing this thing was tempered at 400 degrees for an hour and a half twice Rockwell is where I want it. Uh, there's still the tiniest, tiniest bit of warping up at the very tip. I don't know if you can see or not. But there's enough there to get that out in the grind, so I'm not too worried about it. So before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and put some heat into the tang just because I forgot to drill the holes before heat treat just to make sure it's good and soft, and uh, you know, we'll keep moving. Alrighty, got my uh, two pin holes drilled as well as a bunch of other ones for uh, just to reduce the weight and help give the epoxy something to grab onto. So what's got to happen now Got to go back through, sand the tank completely flat, and make sure uh, you know it's good to go for scale fit up. I left it slightly thicker than the rest of the knife for that exact reason. We'll true up the grind, bring the edge down a little bit, take it up the grits. I might actually end up hand sanding the flats because there's just not a lot of room to play with and I don't want to hog off a bunch of material. I tell you, it was pretty interesting drilling through uh, the handle of this billet. You're, there's a pretty noticeable difference in drilling through the wrought iron and the 1095 even back here in the tang where it isn't hardened. You know, just kind of cool. Alrighty, got this thing to a nice satin. Grain of the iron starting to show through. It's gonna look cool. But uh, we'll throw it in the acid and start working on the scales. So after the first etching cycle, I could see up at the tip, the wrought iron was running kind of across the edge. So I took off about a half inch of material did a little bit of creative grinding to the bevels and uh, 
Now we got our 1095 running the whole length of the edge, you know, just barely up there at the tip, but it is hard across the whole edge. So we'll just keep going through the etching until uh, we get the surface finish we want. So there we go. One wrought iron, 1095 sand my. Really happy with the way the blade came out. This wrought iron's got a really interesting texture. It's almost like tree bark. It's kind of cool. But went with African blackwood for the handle, simple copper pins, nothing crazy. I skipped over the making of the handle because you've seen me make handles a thousand times and also the video's running kind of long. I like to keep the videos at or around 10 minutes or so and I think we're already pushing like 15 just because this whole thing was such a long process. But anyway, there's that. This knife's going to go up for sale on the Etsy with 75% of the money being donated to the Clara White Mission, the nonprofit we talked about at the start of the video. Also, I just kind of wanted to take a second to talk to you guys about what's been going on here at the shop. If you don't know, I do Smith full time now. You know, this is my day job. And uh, business has been really, really good to the point where I actually almost kind of struggle to keep up sometimes. You know, I'm one guy and I do everything by hand. I am saving money pretty aggressively for a forge press, and once I get one of those, that's going to cut a lot of the time it takes to complete a lot of things down, and hopefully I should have more time to, you know, get back to making regular YouTube content for you guys. But anyway, there's that. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. Patrons of the channel, big thanks to you guys, those of you who purchase work and uh, off the Etsy and place custom commissions. Big thanks to you guys, and uh, that's all I got for you. Y'all take care.